Well, hey there, Internet. Welcome to Thousand Year Home. My uh, deal here is I'm building a house that will last a thousand years. For those of you who've been watching along regularly, I much appreciate it. You'll notice behind me that my one-month closet build is still ongoing. And last night, I'm in the middle of the dark. An old man's back got hurting. You know, I went and did a video without y'all. Now, I know some of you are going to be upset about that, that I didn't take you along. But videos in the dark are mostly me getting hurt with a lot of cussing. And they just, they just don't. I get work done. But it's not the same Steve at 3 in the morning when the back hurts and I have to get up and move around and it's uh, 32 outside. There's a different, different Steve at that moment. And the Zen Steve... Uh, she's not video worthy. Besides, I don't know, you know, my beard and I'm half groomed out here, kind of embarrassed of the, all of this thing. But anyway, so I jumped ahead here and last night I took one of those shelves that I built up and sanded it and did some stuff without you. Let's take a look here at a finished project and then I'll take you back to the start in the middle of the day and I'll do a couple other shelves. Uh, uh, well, the problem is the wind blows super strong sometimes, and when it does, a pop-up trailer does not hold the heat. So sometimes I can get the camp stove going and a little heater in that pop-up, and uh, the old man feels all right, all snuggled up. And other times, the canvas in the inside of my pop-up trailer is just as breezy and cold <laughs> as the outside. And not all the camp pop-up thing. Anyway, th that's why I live in a truck. And, it's, and this shipping container would be so much healthier. So much healthier. So I, I'm proving you can live in a, a pop-up trailer if you're just stubborn. But uh, let me see here. There you go. I'm carrying you around now. Carrying you all. So there we go. I went ahead and sanded one out. And... You know, what I want to make sure is somebody reaching in doesn't get hurt on a sliver. So I just uh, I just angle grind that. This isn't fancy. Still going with the rough cut. I'm reasonably happy with these edges. You know, reasonably. And this is the front. The front is the back and the back is the front. The reason am I is um, I'm going to nail up boards on here. And I just wanted it this way so my Brad nailer could get it. But listen, for those of you who say size doesn't matter... I disagree. Look at that nice, beefy, girthy shelf. Everybody wants a shelf like that. I know everybody does. Well, you know, I'm proud of that there shelf. So, let's take you along on a little shelf journey, and I'll uh, finish doing the rest of these. Let's show you. Look at there. You're just sitting right down there, waiting for me to finish them up. So I've decided I'm going to put the first one up two feet. I like a shelf that I can get to. And I, I the bottom ones are going to be a thin board, I think, because I want to be able to lift it up. I'm going to put some holes in there, a handle, a recessed handle, so you can hide you some stuff down in there, Internet. I'm going to take a, and I'm going to put a journal in there that will say the thousand year home. And whenever somebody finds that journal, they need to put an entry in it. A thousand years from now, it'll have documentation of everything that's going on. The other side, I could put uh, uh, extra spare toilet paper and other sundries that are, are necessary for survival. I bet you nobody burglarizes a bathroom. I could put jewels and diamonds and golds in there. If I had jewels and diamonds. <laughs> Jewels and diamonds and gold. I am not a, uh, a. I like old tools more than I do treasures. I can't see anybody robbing me. That'd be pointless. Unless you like old tools, then well, you can come, come and try. I will fight you over my old tools. You'd be surprised how much I'm willing to fight over an old tool. I am willing to fight to the death. I ain't got much years left in me. So if somebody coming to steal my tools, that'd be foolish. Foolish. All right. Here we go. So anyway, that's a finished. Uh, well, an inserted sanded shelf. Notice I beveled the edges. They're all rounded. So 
you know, I'm not going to get a splinter reaching in. I knocked down that seam in the middle, but I left a little bit of character. It's an honest joint is what that's called. When you, when you leave your woodwork where you can see your work, that's called honest. Honest whatever. Honest joint, honest repair, honest whatever. So that's an honest joint right there. Even that, there's a little gap right there. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about that. It, it's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere once. And then ultimately, right here, when I put these in and the finally pound them into the spot I want, you know, I'll, I'll do a little counter six screw there and there. And then underneath, I'll demonstrate on the top, but underneath I'll do one here and one there underneath. And uh, you won't see that. Maybe the top shelf, maybe I'll do it on the top. You know, just so people don't see see that. So the seam's honest, but the fasteners, you won't see, you don't see a fastener. This was put together with sheer love and willpower. All right, let me stand one of these up. I'm going to stand outside because I'm tired of, tired of dust all over everything. But I'll set you up in the window and you can watch me through the window. I'm hoping that the camera focuses. But let me finish up both of those and you can watch me. Grind it up outside and get some satisfaction out of that. And of course, I'll probably high speed you through that. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring you out with me since I'm going to high speed. I'll tell you what. I will bring you outside and you all can stand with me in the, uh, we'll call it a spring, spring sun, but it's actually still winter here. Let's do that. That way everybody gets to be part of the whole thing.
Alrighty, internet. Let me uh, I know that I'm gonna fast uh, speed walk you through that sanding because sanding's boring, but there's some technique there that you're gonna miss if I don't talk at you a little bit. So uh, if you watch that, uh, the first thing I do is I go after any obvious uh, emergency level 911 slivers, you know, anything like that. Now this is. Uh, my version of sanding, which isn't, you know, furniture grade here. I'm going for a Spanish Mission vibe, old. So one thing that everybody does like is they like the uh, scraped over wood feeling. And um, so you saw that I used an angle grinder with the head. Now when I run my hand over this, it's smooth, but wavy. So I follow the grain, especially the soft grain, and I go down, and this isn't something that I'm able to really show, maybe if I had better light or something, but if anybody has scraped wood, old wood that's been around for a while, you know how it has the ridges? That's super cool, people love it, it's very trendy, and it feels wonderful. So even though this isn't, you know, like planar smooth, I didn't run it through a planer, it's smooth. Ta soft, very gentle, but it's got an organic and earthy feel that your fingers just love. And that's because I followed each and every one of the channels inside the wood. Now I, did, uh, I, I didn't just randomly pick things. I went ahead and I followed the uh, valleys of the wood that's the softer grain. And I left the harder grain to, for the top. Anyway, nonetheless, when I'm all said and done, this thing just, ah, oh, feels good. So when I, now a closet, you know, I'm gonna be throwing clothing in here, towels on top of it. Somebody might throw something nice on there, not just old junk that I wear, but it's possible that there'd be silk garments thrown on here or pantyhose or anything like that. So I wanna make sure I take care of those guests that uh, my closets don't eat their, uh, their, pro their materials, right? And this is the way I'm doing it. So all the edges, if you notice, all the edges, I've anywhere you touch, it's rolled over. So those slivers that you see like along here, those will still get you. So the last thing I have to do uh, with this whole design is uh, it doesn't just drop in here. Boop. If you look, I will have to force it in right into position. And that's because I built this with tolerances. So what I end up doing is I pick whatever side I want and I end up beveling everything so that it's rolled. So that gives me the space I need to drive this down and set it. And uh, so that'll be the last thing that I'll do on here. Occasionally, uh, when I get close to having it all the way driven in, I'll notice that I made a mistake. Also, here's a mistake. I don't want anybody to see that groove. It's very, very obvious. Well, I'm just going to sand it out. I'm going to take my angle grinder and sand it out. A flaw will be easier on the eye than a line. I'll also, I see I missed that, so I'll break that. So uh, I take my angle grinder and I dial it in as I'm driving it in. And where is it too tight? Where is it, you know, where can I remove material to make this drop down in and fit? And I can see right away that I'm going to need to even cut some off back there. So this is the futsy work. Now this one uh, might go in. This is the futsy work that I told you all on why it takes so long to build anything custom. Uh, Sanding, cutting, fitting, sanding, cutting, fitting, sanding, cutting, 15, rinse and repeat. Takes a little while. So what I'm gonna do is put you uh, back on the cradle. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna knock those bevels in, like I mentioned, I want the dust outside. And uh, then I'll, I'll slowly start dialing that in so I can drive it into the, uh, the shelf frame and uh, it'll be in there. And so far, none of these have screws in yet. I can still drive them up or drive them down with a mallet. All right, let's see if we can get this next shelf in there. I'm gonna drive it in about where I think it will belong. 
So what I was doing off camera, outside, is I went ahead and I, I cut a little rolled edge right there so that it'll roll in and snap in place. Now, how do I want it to roll in? Well, let's see here. Let's see how that fits. Oh, I'm almost there. I don't think I'll take any more off than that. Uh, I'm not going to prune. I'm not going to anything. You could see right there that I'm, I'm close. If this, you were looking at it uh, live, I'm, I'm off. This, I mean, your eyeball sees it. This is a, a full inch different. But I think with a rubber mallet and a little persistence, I can get it in there. So let me see about my little persuader here. I don't want to break the cabinet wood itself. So I'm listening to uh, any creaking, any groaning. When I'm all done, and I want to make sure I didn't flip it the wrong way, I already checked that out. Ooh, so close. Close enough for government work. Oh look, I got visitors and you didn't ring a doorbell. Hey, how you doing? All right, well, there you go. Let me hit stop for a moment. <laughs>